Hello and welcome back to my channel Complicated Relationships Reddit Stories. Hope you guys are safe and healthy. Now let's see what the story is about today. My wife and I had what I thought was the perfect relationship. We were best friends and it seemed to benefit each other in a multitude of ways. But sadly I found evidence of my wife having a relationship with another man on a very special day of the year. Now let's see how this story unfolds. Also if you like what I do please give this video a thumbs up and do subscribe to the channel. We grew up together and dated our last two years of high school all the way through college. Physically we were each other's first everything. We attended the same university in different fields of study and married two years after graduation. We moved to a major city near our hometown to be near our families. I got a job as an engineer making a very decent salary with benefits. She got a job teaching at a high-profile private school which she loved. Together we made great money, so we always spent so much time together. We traveled, we dined out frequently, and every night felt like a date night. Intimacy was always been great, so we had a great life in general. Well, at least that's what I thought. We were planning to try and have children soon. Easter morning at the break of dawn, we were supposed to help at our church hiding Easter eggs on the property for kids to find later. My wife took many pictures on her phone of us as well as many members of the congregation. We all ended up having coffee and donuts while conversing before heading home. She said she was going back to bed for a few hours when we got back. I wanted to preview the college basketball championship game the next night because my father was a Baylor graduate. We'd brought my wife's iPad along, which I used all the time like it was my very own. I never expected to see anything, and she didn't anticipate it showing me anything. OP was reading an article on the iPad as they were walking into the house. In the lower right corner, an icon appeared that said something about photos, then picture after picture appeared, one on top of the other. I don't know if my wife's phone was syncing to the iPad or our Wi-Fi. I saw the pictures were the ones my wife had just taken minutes before outside the church, so I continued reading. Suddenly, a few pictures flashed by that looked like they contained nudity, which was very out of character for my wife. I tried tapping on the pictures to go back, but it was like the photos weren't on the iPad. It just showed each one to me for a split second. I opened the photo file, but nothing remotely pornographic was stored on the iPad. For the first time in the history of our relationship, I felt like she might be hiding something from me. I searched every file on the iPad, but I couldn't find what I'd seen. Eventually, I realized to ease my mind, I'd have to check my wife's phone. I walked upstairs and found her sleeping soundly in our bed. I grabbed her phone off the charger and took it into our bathroom. We'd never had phone password policy. We just used each other's devices at will with nothing to hide. So discovering her passcode had been changed made my heart nearly stop. My eyes welled up with tears just knowing my wife was probably hiding something from me. OP walked back into the bedroom and left the phone back on the charger. He tried acting as normally as possible. She knew me better than anyone, so keeping all emotions welled up while at the same time being sneaky was difficult. But late that afternoon, when she was in the kitchen, I heard her text alert. I popped around the corner just in time to see her enter a brand new code. Later that night, after she'd gone to bed, I again took her phone into the bathroom. I entered the new code and opened her photos file. To my surprise, nothing close to a photo containing nudity was anywhere to be found. I even found the photos she'd taken at the church that morning. Nothing bad was among them. I was just about to close the app when I decided to look for deleted photos. I found two photos of my wife nude and partially nude, along with a naked shot of some guy other than me. I quickly sent all three pics to my phone and placed my wife's phone back in the holder, went to the downstairs bathroom, and vomited like I'd been given Ipecac. I sure didn't know who the guy was in the picture. I laid on the floor and cried like a little child. I had never cried harder in my life, but I just knew something was wrong. I could feel it. I got a few hours of sleep and got up to go to work. I researched how to recover texts from a phone. As it turns out, since the plan we had was in my name through my employer, I could access every message and pics sent via text. Long story short, OP recovered raunchy messages, selfies, and yes, even pics and videos of them together. It was all there. I could say OP went and vomited again, but it was dry heaving. I knew instantly everything with my wife, my best friend, was over. 
and every dream I had was gone. I yelled primal screams of rage. I was thankful she wasn't there at my moment of discovery. I didn't know what I was capable of, and I didn't want her to see me like that. I couldn't think what to do, where to go, who to call. I was just in shock, and the person I would have turned to at a time like that was the very person who had destroyed me. My wife usually got home a few hours from work before I did, so I parked down the street and waited. I thought she'd probably head to her lover's for a quick one after work, but she left and went straight home. I was following her most of the way. I'd printed out pages and pages of texts and pictures at work to show her what I knew. I didn't want to ever lay eyes on her again. Those pictures in particular ended all the love I ever had for her in an instant. I went from loving her more than I knew it possible to hating her with every fiber of my being. We were done the second she cheated. My mind was all over the place and I just wanted to go home, pack a bag, and leave without seeing her or saying a word if possible. Well, when O.P. walked in the front door, the wife was sitting on the couch, texting. She smiled and noted that I was home from work early. I didn't say a word to her. I just walked down the hall into our bedroom, got a suitcase, and began packing to stay in a hotel room. She saw me packing and asked if I had to go on a sudden business trip. I stopped what I was doing, looked directly at her with a stare of absolute loathing, and then continued packing. She placed her hand on my back. I turned and yelled at her loudly to never touch me again before pushing her away. When she tried to ask what was wrong, I pulled out the stack of papers I'd copied, threw them onto the bed, closed my suitcase, and began to leave. I heard her scream no before breaking down in tears and running to catch me. She managed to make it outside before I pulled off. I extended my middle finger in her direction as I drove away. I turned my phone off. My plan was to completely ghost her and divorce her. I didn't want to know how they met why it happened, and what exactly had occurred between them. She knew that infidelity was a deal-breaker. I got a motel room about a mile from my job. O.P. called his mom and told her where he was, said that he would be divorcing his wife, and he will be looking for a new job in another state, so he never had to run into his soon-to-be ex-wife or any of her family again. I was exhausted after the call with my mom, so, I cried myself to sleep only to be awakened by a knock at the door around midnight. I got up and looked out the people to see my STBXW anxiously waiting for me to open the door. I couldn't grasp how she'd found me, much the less figured out what room I was in, but I did not want to see her or hear her voice. After what she did to me, she lost any right to even look in my general direction. I called the local police and explained the situation as they sent two officers. I watched as the police removed my STBXW from in front of the door and led her over to the squad car. Then one officer knocked on the door and I let him into the room. He assured me they wouldn't let my wife in and asked how I wanted them to proceed. I explained I wanted her to leave me alone and I wanted absolutely no contact with her ever again. He and I filled out all the necessary paperwork for a restraining order. He made sure the RO was what I wanted since it would limit me from being able to go back to my house on my own to get things without police escort. I told him I never wanted to enter that house again. I was done with her and she could have it and the rest of our belongings. He got her to sign the RO. I watched her and the cops drive away, then went back to bed for a few hours. After work the next day, OP went to his parents' house for dinner. They had all my siblings and their spouses over as well. My parents called me aside as dinner was ending and suggested I let everyone there know what had happened and was about to happen. There were still a few people eating when I began to talk, but the news sort of ruined everyone's appetites. They were all as shocked and enraged as I had been. Two of my siblings had gotten calls from my ex when I left, and I had felt sorry for her. Both wished they'd known what was going down so they could have given her a piece of their minds. Next day I met with my lawyer. We live in an at-fault state, so the stack of papers proving infidelity was a welcome sight to her. I tried to approach that meeting with 100% logic and no emotion. All emotions are temporary, and letting your emotions lead you through life is a recipe for utter chaos. The only thing OP was concerned with was she could not touch his 401k or the other investments given to him before the marriage. My lawyer called me at work today to let me know my wife had been served at her job and asked me to come by after work to talk with the messenger they'd sent to serve the papers. When I went there, messenger explained he'd taken the paperwork by the school at around 10 a.m. A member of the faculty led him to my wife's classroom. She was in the middle of a lesson as he opened the door. 
The courier asked my wife to verify her name and told her she had now been served with official divorce papers due to infidelity. He said my STBXW was shocked, embarrassed to be served at work in front of her students, and was fighting back tears. He told me as he walked out, she fell onto the floor and began sobbing uncontrollably. That was all good to hear, and I was glad she'd gotten the paperwork. End of the story. Well, Lopi, you will heal, the pain will pass. You have done what so many failed to do. Immediately cut all contact, walked away with the first sign of disrespect and betrayal. A broken trust will always be broken. Reconciliation is wasted on almost every wayward. The silver lining is that you can excise her completely. You have no children for her to use as leverage over you. Survive each day and hit the gym. Find an outlet for your frustrations. I really hope you are divorced by now. I wish you all the best. Thank you all for listening. Please like, comment and share the video if you enjoyed it. Also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when we upload the next video. Take care.